Hello everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome to returning subscribers and to new subscribers alike. I have finished up the pockets that I did in my last craft with me. I haven't actually loaded that video yet, but that will come very soon using the paint chip sample cards. Now, I'm really happy with the way they came out, so I just thought I'd give you a quick, quick look at the finished product. So these ones we've just stamped the background on the plain sample card and very simply added a piece of lace trim to the card which I've sewn around the whole card to add a little bit more detail and create a pocket at the front. Each piece of lace is a little bit different but I still think they all look quite cohesive. I really love that one, I think that's my favourite. That was the one my mum sent me. Hi mum, love you. Again, I don't know if she's watched my channel yet, but she says she will, so. And then these ones here, I actually talked about using them as possible journaling cards, but I've decided that because the pattern paper that we've added to the top of the paint chip card had a tendency to lift slightly in the corners at times, that over time that might be a problem, so I think they're better off using them. I'm better off using them as pockets, but I really love the way they came out too. Now I've sewn around the clusters that I made on video and I've just attached those with some glue. That first card, I've actually sewn that piece of lace trim onto the card just to secure it properly. And each one again, a little bit different. This cluster has that beautiful soft wool. And again, I think they look beautiful all together. So, so I'm really happy with those. Now, today's craft with me, I was about to get started and decided I'd turn the camera on. I'm trying something new. <laughs> Thought I'd take you along. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the ride, I don't know why I do this to myself because I don't know how it will go, but fingers crossed that it works out great. My inspiration for today's craft with me has come from Analyst Journaling. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I discovered her channel through Tracy Fox's Facebook page, actually. She posted a link of this tutorial on the page and I was totally inspired. I purchased Tracy Fox Digitals for the first time this week. Um, purchased a couple, had to go back and get a couple more. I have a thousand more in my cart. Um, and these collar sheets, I don't know why, I was watching the video that Annalise did and I suddenly decided that it would be great to use for this process. So I will link Annalise's um, YouTube channel in the details below and you can check it out. Assuming this goes well and I actually post this video. So... I am going to use my round punch. Now, I don't recall what size punch Annalise used for hers, but I have a two inch punch here. So I'm just going to pick spots on this collar sheet that I think will work well. And I might actually trim that a little bit just so I can get my punch in there. Again, hoping this goes well and you actually all get to see it. I've been wanting to play with this for a couple of days now too, so... Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Trim 
messed up. Now I have printed these on photo matte paper and I do have Gayla Gostinelli to thank for that because I'd actually been using cardboard. I had a white card in my cupboard that I'd had here for many moons and I've been using that up and I recently, well I think I still have a tiny bit left but was concerned about what I was going to do when that ran out and was watching Gail's channel and she mentioned that she uses the photo mat paper and I love how the images come out when you use the matte paper in comparison to the card. Mind you, I did love the card as well. It's just a different, different result actually. I like that script. I might take some of this script down here. Now I may not do all of these on camera, but I'll just cut a few out. I think these papers are incredible. I can see them having so many different uses already. Okay, so that gives us six to work with. Okay, so Annalise's video, she was making metal framed round tags. So that's what we're going to have a go with. Now, ironically, some time ago, I purchased an embossing pen and I had no idea what I was going to use it for at the time. I just knew I had to have it. So when I saw Annalise's tutorial, I was totally inspired and realized that that was why. That was why I had to add that to my list of ever-growing supplies. So... Now I'm just wondering which way I want to do this. I actually want to make them double sided so and I didn't actually get out a stencil so I just have in here some stencils that I've actually cut out myself on my Cricut machine using I call them overhead projector overhead transparencies but um, I'm not sure what you call them, whether it's the same or not, but, okay, so I just have a, like a beehive shape, I hope you can see that, and I'm just going to use a little bit of my Distress Ink to do a little stenciling on the back. I actually did buy some brushes to try brushing the ink on rather than using my Distress tool, but I don't actually know where I've put them. And I don't want it to be overly heavy. I just want just a little bit of detail. Sorry, I think I was off camera then. And I think I might do them all the same. Just to keep things moving. And one of the reasons I love the idea of using this stencil is because it doesn't matter which way around it goes, it's always going to look right. I think it was oh, Artie Mays, I think did a tutorial using some brushes that looked amazing and that kind of sparked my interest but I'm not always able to get the same resources that many of you can get or I can but the shipping costs are crazy to get them here so I sometimes do try and look for alternatives excuse me I've just got to get 
a baby wipe and of course there's the back of my desk. Yeah, so sometimes I do try and look for alternatives that are more reasonably priced for me here. And that's not a bad thing. That's just means I have to be a little bit resourceful and creative at times. Okay, just pop that up there and set that aside in case I need it. Okay, so now I have my discs with the stenciling on the back. Okay, fingers crossed this works, guys. So, Annalise took her embossing pen and just went around the outside. Again, I've got the baking paper or parchment paper on my craft mat. Just to protect my work surface. As I thought, I'm actually lifting some of the colour off this. I have an inkjet printer, I believe, so probably not the best for the pen, unfortunately. But if this works, it'll be worth it. So, just going to pop this all the way around. And again, I'm using my heat heat gun, so do protect your ears when I turn it on. Now I just want to do one to see if it's actually going to work. Okay, so far so good. It looks like it might. And I have got that on. Okay. Now I'm wondering if I need... And we'll see how we go. perfect but vintage isn't perfect so you can see that it actually looks like it has a metal ring around it and at least what a clever clever thing to do okay so I might just continue with the others Now I did go slightly lightly on that one. I wasn't sure how badly my ink would lift off my print. And I'm kind of thinking that because this is working so well, I might use this pen for items that are printed and then perhaps get another pen that I can use for items that aren't printed. Although once the embossing powder is on here unless it's actually a clear that you're using you're not going to see it anyway really are you okay 
okay. Now I should say the embossing powder that I'm using is, I've put the container behind me, I'll grab it in a second and I'll show you. I've just popped it in here so I don't have to worry about I find these containers give a nice big work surface that I don't have to have sprinklings of embossing powder that I have to then shake back into my container. So I started storing them in there, but it's a Whispers metallic embossing powder. And I only have a couple of embossing powders, so a gold would have been lovely as well to go with the paper colours, I think. But I don't think I have a gold, so... Okay, I'm just going to grab a pair of tweezers out of my jar. Sorry. I'm hoping to go and have a look at some storage ideas on the weekend and try and sort out my desk space a little better. Actually, these ones might be better. Okay, again, not perfect. I don't mind that. I did actually wonder if it was possible to... Oops, sorry about the camera, guys. To... I do have an embossing... I think this may be it here. An embossing stamp pad. And I have wondered whether... Well, we could give it a go, I suppose. the prettiest but I have wondered if it's possible to do it this way I hope you can see and I actually wondered if doing it this way would do the back as well I'm really not sure how this is going to work out, guys. It could be completely imperfect or it could be fine. And it looks like I may have a bit of embossing where I don't want it. Oh well, it's all trial and error. I'm not even sure how juicy my embossing stamp pad is. I haven't used it for a while. Actually, that looks like it's going on quite well. And it has, why would you try and flick when you're actually, try and flick with your left hand when you're right handed. Sorry, with your left hand when you're right handed, oh my goodness. I've had a crazy couple of days guys. Okay, it hasn't given me as thick an edging. I'll just heat emboss it and show you.
hasn't gone over to the back as much. But it just actually has a, a slightly worn, I don't want to put my hands underneath until it cools down. I hope you can see that. You can see there's one spot here. I could actually see that embossing powder. I'm not quite sure how to get it off once it's on there, so I'll have to be a little bit mindful of that. But maybe in the second step I can change that. So as I said, it has a... slightly worn look on the back but I actually really love that how beautiful is it Annalise I'm in love with these thank you so much for sharing okay I might use this again we'll see if we can Get a better edge on the back than we did in our first attempt. Although, as I said, I quite like the back as it is. Just adds that little bit of detail. Now I'm just trying to catch the light so I can see if I've gone all the way around. I don't think I have quite. And I'm not planning on actually putting anything on the back of these. So depending on how I use them, they could be a journaling card. Or Annalise actually put hers on a pin. Which I'm not actually sure I want to do yet. Okay, I'm not sure if I've got all that, but we'll leave that there. Sorry about the noise, guys. And just rotating it around to pick up the embossing powder. I hope I'm in camera. Yep. See if I've got a brush I can use. As I said, I don't want this to be perfect. I do want to make sure I don't have any in the center. Okay. Just going to check the back is set. Okay. I 
think they look beautiful. So I might quickly do the next two with my embossing, embossing pen. Now I have just realised that some of you may not have used a heat gun before. So I will try and do one closer to camera so that you can actually see how it turns. That way you know what to look for. I just assume I'm so far behind the times as far as all of this is concerned because I started actually looking at mixed media probably about 12 to 18 months ago and have played with that for or since then which is actually where I was introduced to the heat gun and I have seen some journalists who have used them journal makers sorry so I just assume that people know these things and that I'm the only one who didn't so my apologies for that for getting that far into the video before I've actually thought about it now I'm only going to do the one side on these I think Either way, they look fabulous, so. And this is a two inch punch, so these are quite large. And I'm thinking I might even be able to use them as perhaps a little tuck spot. I could use them as a journaling card, just as they are even. Like, how pretty does that look as a journaling card? Whoops. I'll get used to this camera thing one day, I promise. I just think that would be beautiful on its own. So, Tracy, you've done an amazing job with these papers. I am in love with them. And I can actually see this working for lots of different papers as backgrounds for, or as journaling cards in their own right. And that hasn't actually adhered very well there, so... ahead of myself okay now I'll give this a go I don't know how I will fare but I'll try and do this in here don't mind the noise watch your ears guys Turning now. Okay, and then turning that around. This is really hard. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not the most coordinated. Okay, so that's that one done. So I'm hoping you'll manage to see how the embossing changed. You do have to be incredibly careful with that heat gun because it does put out quite a lot of heat, which is why I decided to get the tweezers. getting some idea it's really hard for me to see what you see in camera and watch the heat gun as well okay 
and that's all six done. And I think they are beautiful. I'll turn her around. Okay. And the ones that Annalise made, she actually embellished. So I'm going to take a couple of these. I haven't decided if I like those just as they are, those three. So I might take these three. And we might have a play now. Again, I have my scrappy papers and my scrappy fabrics. And I'm just going to use some glue, I think. I have this 450 quick dry adhesive that we have. We can't actually get Fabri-Tac here. So from what I found, this seems to be my equivalent. It's not actually necessarily for fabric, but I believe you can use it with fabrics. You can use it for bridal wear. So um, I do actually have a, a separate fabric glue that I've been using. And one of the reasons I chose these was because it's acid free. And so is this quick dry adhesive it's also acid free so and I just got those at my local spotlight store for anybody who's in Australia now I do have and embellishing these I'm not going to need a lot of things So I've got some music paper here and this page is out of a botanical book which kind of seems fitting because I do have a lot of plants in this journal although it's a wedding journal we have decided to um, not make it just about the wedding so that if the bride and groom decide they'd like to use it for something else they can um, I have a little bit of tissue paper and I also have this tea bag which I think will be really pretty on there just like another piece of tissue And then I think that's all I need for those. I think I can work with that. As I mentioned yesterday in my craft with me, I had a piece of paper that I was using for stamping. So I just wanted to show you that that's it. Now, I'm not going to use it on these because I have these beautiful backgrounds that Tracy has created. So I'm just going to use those because it would be, I already think it's a shame to cover them up. That's why I, I'm thinking about leaving those plain or unembellished. They're not plain by any means. Um, because I, I just love them. I think they're beautiful. I'm actually looking at these trims. I actually really like that. And as I said yesterday, I am a stickler for distressing. So I will be distressing these papers. I'm sorry, I know that's time consuming for you all, but I really am just taking you along on my process. So this is the way I do it. Had to go to the doctors yesterday and get a flu shot because I had a friend call in here last week who 
phoned me to say that she has been hospitalised with the flu, so I should look at um, making sure that I protect myself as much as possible. So I had to organise that yesterday. Well, I actually organised it a couple of days earlier. I might just tear that ever so slightly. And I think I really like that. I feel like it needs a little depth. Do have this tiny piece of fabric just feel like it needs everything's blending too much I quite like that. You can still see plenty of the background. So I'm actually thinking I might pop a stitch in there. I've got my sewing machine set up beside me, so just bear with me. So sorry guys. And I did shift it, so I just need to check. I'm not putting a lot of stitches in here, just a couple to hold it. Wasn't sure my sewing machine was going to give it up then. I think it really liked it. Okay, I'm just going to cut those little strings off. Again, with my all-purpose scissors that do absolutely everything. And those couple of strings I pop into my little collection that I have. And then I'm just going to run some glue. I just realised I haven't even checked the, the time. Goodness me. So busy just doing what I want to do and... My paper towel. I find it easier to press my glued things down with paper towel. It doesn't tend to stick as much. If I use my finger, it usually ends up stuck to my finger and lifting. Okay, and that's that one. I just think that's so pretty. Now the ones that Annalise did, she put a crocodile um, fastener in here and then linked a a pin through it oops so she could attach it to her journal that way as I said I'm not quite sure that that's how I want to use these yet so I'm not going to do that just now 
but I will link her YouTube channel in the description below so that you can go and check out hers because they were fabulous. Okay, I'm going to keep working here, but I will turn the camera off for now. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Thank you.